Yeah, go ahead and put that picture up, Christy. I just want to show you all that. They're getting this, all the sides on the, the church. The, the, this is a, a different kind of siding. It's not just like metal like we put on our buildings. It has actually an insulative foam backing to it, so it's about three inches thick. But doesn't that, isn't that a cool picture? And all that you see is going to be windows in there and glass up at the top so we can get all the natural light in there. And then, of course, out those windows you can see about, you know, looks like about 100 miles around through there, so it's beautiful. So praise the Lord. We're getting there. Um, get your Bibles out this morning. And if you would, go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4. You know, uh, yesterday we went to a high school reunion. It was a uh, we my f- my wife's fortieth graduation, fortieth and forty years. I was like, wow, she's a lot older than I am, you know, and <laughs> haven't reached those marks yet. But it was funny. I was talking to different people, and you know, everybody was talking about being retired, and I'm like, retired. I'm not going to retire. I'm never going to retire. I I hope to be, you know, to the oldest age I can possibly be standing and preaching somewhere. Amen. So anyway, I thank you all for coming in this this, event we're going to have uh, on Saturday and and celebrate together 25 years because it it is a milestone. I want to tell you something. It's a milestone as far as I'm concerned. It's a big deal. I thank you all for being there and blessing me, my family. Uh, It's going to be fun. Amen. So anyway, I want to share a word with you this morning that uh, just kind of, it just doesn't, it's not tied in, it's not a series, it's just, it's just, a, just one message out here this morning. And I'm just calling it the kingdom of God, okay? So I'm going to read something to you here in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14 is where I want to start. Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Corinth, and he says, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers for in, in Jesus Christ. I have begotten you through the gospel. Now, so what Paul's talking about, he's saying, look, man, you, anybody can come in and instruct you and tell you something, but who's going to father you? Who's going to be a person that's going to take care of you? You know, a father has to take care of them. You know, when I, when, when I became a father, when my children were born, I wasn't thinking at the moment that I was going to be taking care of my children forever. I'm not saying that in a negative form. I'm just saying you didn't think about that. You didn't have a baby, and you're just going to raise this child up, and then at 18, they leave the house, and then no more. No, there's still instruction. There's still love, and then there's grandchildren. Hello? And, and, and I didn't really think all this through. Now, because I said it's not negative, I just every once in a while tell my wife, I didn't think about this one. (laughs) You know? Uh, That wasn't when we were thinking about having a family, I didn't think quite this far down the road. And now I'm here. But the Apostle Paul saying, look, there's a lot of people that will tell you something about Jesus, but you you want to find people in life who will be a father to you that will continue to instruct you, will continue throughout their life messages their instruction in life continue to bless you. Like a father to me is Billy Graham. I love Billy Graham. I love I leave it, his books, his messages, his inspiration. He's a father to me. I never met Billy Graham. I've never shaken his hand. He's never prayed over me per se specifically. But I've watched, I started out when my grandparents having me in front of the TV watching Billy Graham. I, I, at that time, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to do it, but it influenced me. It did something. It touched my soul. The man had a, had a ministry that was uh, remarkable throughout his whole life. Uh, he, he upheld the gospel. He preached the gospel, the pure, pure gospel. Amen? So he's a father to me. And so whenever I hear a Billy Graham message, he's still fathering me. Are you all with me? You got to have fathers in life, fathers in the ministry, fathers who teach you, fathers who instruct you. When I even look around at, you know, some of the, the, the young people here in church, 
and, and, they have, and I see your children. And I realized that when I started passing this church 25 years ago, you were a child. I mean, that makes me feel fatherly. I don't want to feel fatherly. But there's a reality to this, okay? You know? So Paul's saying, look, you got to have fathers in the ministry. He, sa- he says then, therefore, I urge you, in t- in, in, imitate me. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and my faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach everyone in every church. Now, some are puffed up. Now, that word puffed up, you know what it means? Puffed up. I mean, it truly means self-inflated. It means you're trying to make something out of yourself. As though they were not coming to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord wills. And I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. Now here, get this. This is the message this morning. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Everybody say it's not in word. It's in power. In other words, this gospel, the gospel that Paul was preaching, the gospel that I'm preaching to you this morning, the gospel that the Bible preaches is saying, listen, listen, it's not about puff. It's not about words. It's about the gospel changing our lives, having power to influence our lives, having power to change us, having power to to make and create in us bigger things than what this world could do in its puffed upness. I wonder if that's a word. So the kingdom of God, it's not in word, it's in power. There's got to be power in our gospel, power in our lives. If you're a Christian and you're walking with Jesus, we should be walking in power. Everybody say power. power. Look at the person beside you and say, you got any power? Well, listen to me. Let me give you a few things of what the kingdom of God is not. This is what the kingdom of God is not. The kingdom of God is not in just forms and rituals. Listen, if you came to church this morning because it's just your habit, you're wrong. If you didn't come to church today to seek the Almighty God, hello, you're just doing it out of a form or a ritual. Listen, you're not going to get the power of the gospel. You're just going to get words. Amen. Hello? I used to always go and I'd ask people. I'd say, you know, uh, I'd say to them, I'd say, do, do you know Jesus? And they'd say, well, you know, I'm a Baptist. Or they'd say, well, I'm a Methodist. Or I'm a, you know, Church of Christ. Or I'm this or that. And I would always stop and say, oh, oh okay, I'm, well, I'm a Christian. And they'd say, well, what do you mean? Because, see, so many times in our forms and rituals, we just get to put denominational names on us instead of, what, wait a minute, we're, we're born again, saved. We're Christians. Hello? Okay, it's not in fancy words. Obviously, you're here today. And it's not about y'all wanting to come to hear fancy words. I'm trying to do a, a new uh, mini book and... And, I, and so they, uh, Katie transcribes it down from the messages and then sends it to me. And I started laughing. I was like, I talk like this? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> and then I was like, well, what do I do with it? I mean, you know, do I try to clean it up and make it proper speech? And then I'm like, well, they didn't even sound like me. So anyway, I just, you know. but you're not getting fancy words. It's not in fancy words. It's not. I remember trying to learn how to pray. And I was so, you know, trying to think that I had to pray a certain way. You know, the King James way. But listen, it's the kingdom of God is not in words. It's not in fancy words. It's in a heartfelt and power. Okay, it's not in buildings. We're building a, 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 a church down there in Guatemala, but it's just a building. It's a place to keep them out of the weather. It's not going to be that it's more special because it's this pretty building. No, it's a place to gather. The beauty is inside the church. Hello? It's not the church. It's who's inside the church. All right? It's not in clothing or in robes. It's not in in special dress or this or that or the other. That's not the kingdom of God. Hello? 
It's not in statues and paintings. It's not in, 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 in relief work. It's not in stained glass. you got to get your mind out of it to, that you walk into a, a beautiful cathedral, and they're beautiful, and I love the architecture, and I, I look at it and say, wow, that's amazing, but that's not the kingdom of God. All right? Hear me now this morning. That's not the kingdom of God. Go to Luke 17, verse 20. Let's find out where the kingdom of God is. Luke 17, 20. It says, now when he asked, now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, this is Jesus speaking. The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will we say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Now think about this, folks. The kingdom. Think of this. The kingdom. The rule, the reign, the authority, the, 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 the whole thing about the kingdom. Anything you can imagine about a kingdom. The kingdom of God, it's in you. So I'm going to kind of mess with your heads today. So then why don't we pray and we look up? Like the kingdom of God's up there. Why do we pray and say, oh, God, what do we look up? Well, pastor, you know, I mean, you know, God sits in the heavens and the heavens are up and are like this. And, okay, I mean, I'm, all right. But listen to me, is that ritual? Is that words? Or is it power? He's saying the kingdom of God. Folks, we don't understand salvation. We don't understand being born again. We don't understand what really happened to us. We know that we're saved. We know that we're going to get to heaven. But we don't understand that the establishment of the kingdom of God was placed inside of us, inside of our hearts, the moment that we made Jesus the Lord of our lives. I have seen it so many times. I've seen it so, so, so many times in this church over 25 years that people come into church, they don't know Jesus. And I don't even have to know, I don't even have to ask them, when did they get saved? Because I can see it on their face. All of a sudden, one day, boom, they don't look the same anymore. All of a sudden, one day, they've given their heart to Jesus, and they don't look the same anymore, and their whole countenance begins to change. Their whole demeanor begins to change. Their whole actions begin to change. Everything begins to change. Why? Because the kingdom of God came to reside on the inside of them. I went to church for years and years of my life. My mother drugged me to church, took me to church, and there I sat in church from, 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 the, from the time I was a small child till I graduated high school. There I was in church. But it was in form and it was in ritual. It wasn't real to me. It wasn't alive to me. The kingdom of God wasn't in me. I was just going through the motions. I was just doing what you were supposed to do as a good boy. But then one day the kingdom of God came on the inside of me. One day I cried out and said, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my life. And boom, something happened. I didn't understand it. I didn't, I didn't know it. I didn't know what really took place. But all of a sudden there was something down here. Something down here that was different. Why? Because the kingdom of God came and resided on the inside of you. The kingdom of God, you can't, you can't be looking up and saying, oh, God. Now, don't get all technical on me here, okay? But you're looking up when you should be looking in. Now, let me show you something here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Do you not know that you're the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of you? All right? Now, I want you to go over here. Go to Romans chapter 10. I want to show you this morning. I'm just calling it how to activate or how to work with the kingdom of God on the inside of you. Now, this may be a bad example, but it's the only one that pops in my head at this moment. You know that they've proven that sugar feeds cancer. And I have a man from the doctor in the back? Okay. Y'all have been in Sunday school, you've been learning all this nutritional things. Okay. 
So that if you have cancer in your body, you keep eating sugar, you feed the cancer, the cancer eventually takes over your body. Well, I don't want cancer to take over my body. I want the kingdom of God to take over my body. So what feeds it? What feeds the kingdom? Okay, so here we go. Romans chapter 10, verse 6. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. The righteousness that is of faith speaks this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. In other words, let me say it this way. He's not saying, oh, God, I need you to come down and do this. Just hear this simplicity this morning. God, I don't need you to come down and do this. You don't have to look over and say, Jesus, I need you to come up out of hell and and save me. Right? I don't need you to... I don't need you to come down and get me. I don't need you to come up and get me. He said, well, where's the word? It's near you. Where is it? It's in your mouth. I, this, this, the Holy Ghost has just been taking me through this thing. And, and it's just become so, I, I start laughing. It's like, I mean, I don't know if this is everybody or just me. But like my wife can tell me. It's, it's right there on the second shelf in the icebox. And I can go over and look and say, it ain't there. It ain't there. It's not there. And then she walks over there and says, it's right there. If you just move that jar just a little bit, it's right there. And I was like, well, it is right there. I mean, I, I tend to set things down and I can't remember where I put it. And I go around looking everywhere for it. And then all of a sudden I look down and there it is. Right? My, my wife got me to doing these little things. You're supposed to do these little mind puzzles where you, you're spelling words. You've got six words, six letters, and you're supposed to spin it around. And you're supposed to spell. I, I, I'm not very good at spelling. I, I, I'll be honest with you. And so, but you, you just look at And sometimes I'll spin them around and spin them around and look at it and look at it. And I'm like, there ain't a word that there's no way you can make a word out of there. And I'll spin it around, spin it around. All of a sudden, <laughs> oh, there's, you know, there's, there, there's a word. It, I can't see it. And then I can see it. Hello? Well, that's what we've been doing with the kingdom of God. What I'm trying to get open to you this morning is, is the kingdom of God is within us. And sometimes we're sitting around saying, oh, God, where are you? He's as near as the mention of him from your lips. Where is he? Well, the kingdom of God, if it's within you, then the seed of power is within you. And if the seed of power is within you, how's it going to work? What's going to come out of your mouth? But what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. That word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So elementary 101, kingdom of God principle working in your life. Elementary 101. Here you go. Salvation comes by saying it out of your mouth and believing it in your heart. Right? So... Listen to me, you're headed to hell. You're going to sizzle like a sausage. Okay? And then all of a sudden you say, "Ah!" the brakes are pulled on. Jesus touches you somehow. Your life's a mess, whatever goes on. Jesus touches you. You say, Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. What'd you do? You just said something out of your mouth and out of your heart. Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. Boom! The kingdom of God went to, came on the inside of you went to work on the inside of you, and then salvation. Ah! Wow, man, now you're headed to heaven. You're headed to hell, and then, whoo, man, instantly you turn, you're headed to heaven. By what you said out of your mouth and you believed in your heart. So you got the very first simple principle of what you said out of your mouth and you believed in your heart brought you out of hell to heaven, and then we stop, and then we say, then our whole... Our whole mind and theology changes, and then we're saying, oh, God, can you do this for me? When you, you changed your world by the very first elementary principle, what you say to your mouth and you believe in your heart. And so the kingdom of God gets established, it gets built up, and then we went to another toolbox to try to work out of. Rather than the toolbox within us, the kingdom of God within us. Are y'all following what I'm saying here? 
The kingdom of God becomes established by what's coming out of your mouth of what you believe. I saw something I, I never had seen the other day. There was a, a mechanic out, and he was working on a piece of my equipment, and uh, he had to torque these bolts, big bolts, and he had to torque them. And I, I, I jokingly said to him, I said, well, you want me to go get a cheater pipe? Because the only way to get a torque on something like that is, you know, usually you have to have a long extension to get enough leverage to pull it. And this dude said, no, I can handle it with my torque wrench. And, you know, most torque wrenches I've seen about that big is a big one. This dude pulled out a torque wrench. Guys, y'all, it was impressive. Like, I wanted to buy one just to hang up in my shop <laughs> to say, look at the size of this baby. I mean, it was, it was a five-foot torque wrench. I've never seen one so big. And I'm like, holy cow, look at the size of that baby. I mean, I had to go over there and look at it. I was all impressed. Point is, he had something bigger in his toolbox than I got in mine. Because mine's about that big. And he said, oh, yeah, we can tor torque up to 1,000 a, a foot-pounds on, on this, this wrench. I'm like, oh, mine will break way before that. Are you all with me? But see... I didn't know that you could have something like that in your toolbox. I didn't know they made them that big. I've never seen one. I've never been around one, never been to a store where there was a five-foot torque wrench. Are y'all with me? And so I learned something. So I said, hey, man, if I ever need to torque a bolt to 1,000 PSI, I bless God, I can go get a big pipe wrench. I mean, get a big torque wrench. They make them. We're walking along in life and we're saying, I, I, need to, I need to see our finances change or I need to learn how to pray over my son or I need to do this or I need to do that. Well, wait a minute. You've got the kingdom of God is within you. There's all various wrenches and torque wrenches and things all on the inside of you. There's all kinds of uh, tools and giftings that are inside of you, but do you know how to operate them? And they're within you. And how close are they to operation? Well, you've got to believe it in your heart and speak it out of your mouth and you'll see that operation begin to come to pass. He said, well, that's too simple. Man, listen to me. Sheep. Sheep. God had to make it simple for us. Are you following what I'm saying here? I'm trying to tell you this morning and get you back down to understand, if you want to see the kingdom of God advancing in your life, it's got to come out. Your toolbox can be used by what comes out of your heart and what comes out of your mouth. And the kingdom of God becomes active and starts moving and flowing. You don't believe it. You don't speak it. The kingdom of God lays dormant within you. You're following me. Go to Mark chapter 4. Let me show you something. Mark chapter 4. I'm going to give you these scriptures and then you can just, you can just jot them down. But Mark chapter 4 verse 35 is a story when Jesus is crossing the sea. And the wind and the storm came up, and the disciples are bailing in their boat, right? And look what he says down here. Well, let me just read the whole thing. On the same day in the evening to come to set unto them, let's cross over to the other side. And when they had left, the multitude took him along on the boat as he was, and little boats also with him, and a great storm arose. And the waves beat in the boat so that they were already filled. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea and said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no, have no faith? And they, were, they, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, Who is this that even the, can know the, the wind and the seas obey him? Think about this, church. Jesus got up out of the boat. Out of the back of the boat, he's asleep. The boat's pitching and doing. They're bailing water. They're doing everything that they can to keep the boat from not sinking in the natural. When they wake Jesus up, he rebukes them. He chastises them, says, man, why are you so fearful? And they're like, because this is the way ships sink. <laughs> because the water's filling up in here. 
Because we remember old Uncle Louis's boat sank and he drowned. Because that's what's going on. What are you talking about, Jesus? And he's like, I'm paraphrasing this. There's more tools in your toolbox than you're using. Speak to the wind. Speak to the storm. And they're like, what do you mean speak to the storm? We, we, we ain't never heard this. We don't know what you're talking about. We don't know how to use this tool. Are y'all with me? See, the thing is, is that we don't get educated. We don't learn how to operate and cooperate with the, the advancement of the kingdom of God in our lives. And so, therefore, we keep using the other, other tools that we would have. If you would have told me that I had to torque that bolt to a 1,000 foot-pounds and all I had was my little torque wrench that I knew was not going to do it, I would have, this is what I would have done. I would have got my regular uh, heavy-duty ratchet set. I would have put it on top of it. I would have put about six or eight foot of pipe on the end of it, and I would have just hung on it as, with my weight and jerked on it until I figured I got it as tight as I could possibly get it and called it good. Right? It may have held for a while. It may not have been enough weight to torque it properly. It might have backed off, or I might have over-torqued it, and then because of the, the, the pressure of the machine, it may have broke. Right? But I'd have been guessing. And I'll tell you what, church, it's too, too long have we just been throwing things and guessing at what God's doing, it's time for us to learn what God's doing. It's time for us to get serious about the advancement of the kingdom of God in our lives, figure out how this works, and get it to functioning in our families. Okay? All right. So, the kingdom of God has power over the natural things. All right? But then, according in Mark chapter 1, it also is a story where Jesus goes in to preach at church, and there's a man with an unclean spirit, and the unclean spirit jumps up and says, you know, Jesus, thou art the son of God, and Jesus says, shut up and be quiet. Cast the devil out of him. So the kingdom of God inside of you also has power over the supernatural. Both the natural and the supernatural. All right? Now, <clears throat> go to 1 John chapter 4. So the kingdom of God that's within you has the power and dominion over the natural and also the supernatural. Amen? Amen? Amen. Y'all agree with me? Okay, but let me show you how the kingdom of God, what, how it flows. How, it, how, it, how is that going to work? How, what is that going to look like? Everybody say right now before we even read this, screen, say, man, we love you, Pastor Robert. Oh, everybody look at the person saying, I'm so glad I came to church. Woo, woo. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifest towards us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, so we ought to love one another. Okay. So in order to figure out how the kingdom of God's going to come out of you and work out of you, you had to figure out how did the kingdom of God get in you. When you said, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died for me on the cross. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. I'm yours. And you meant it from your heart. The kingdom was placed in you through love. God so loved you. God so loved the world. God loved, sent Jesus. The whole principle coming down towards you was love. Love, God's love, established the kingdom of God in you. It is a kingdom 
built upon love. It operated, it broke through all the, the listen, you were, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm painting a pretty big picture here this morning, but just imagine that you were entangled with the, the, the snares of the world and everything's just dragging you down into the muck and the mire and dragging you down into hell and what broke all of that and rescued you and saved you was when you believed the kingdom of God came, it was love that broke it. God's love for you, not Casper the Friendly Ghost, not, not, you know, not Twilight Zone experience. It was love. See, we're, we're thinking love like, oh, I love you, sweetie. I do. But we're, we're thinking of a, a emotional love. We're not thinking of the power of agape love, the God kind of love. It's different than any kind of fleshly love that we have on the face of the earth. It's this force, this power that God's kingdom works on called love. And it's what established everything in you. It's what built the kingdom in you. It's what came down on the inside of you and it got it all erected. To, was love. So then when you want to operate in the kingdom of God and have the kingdom of God then turn around and come working out of you, how's it going to operate? In love. Matthew 9.35 through 38. It said, Then Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. In other words, the harvest is a lot of people caught and wrapped up in the things of the devil, but there's very few who want to walk in the kingdom of love. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest, send laborers unto the harvest. You see what's going on in the world today, church? Is there is nothing but hatred and anger? Listen to me. The world is going nuts, so. This is not about Democrats and Republicans. This is about a kingdom of love and a kingdom of hate. Hear what I'm saying. I don't care. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to argue politics. I'm here to tell you this is not a Republican and a Democrat thing we see going on in the world today. This is the kingdom of darkness. This is the kingdom of hate. This is the kingdom that is anti-love. Oh, they, 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 listen, if you're going to have to push somebody else down to bring somebody up, that's not love. If you have to beat the white man down to bring the black man up, that ain't love. Love brings them both up. Hello? And in the world today and what's going on today and we see it, it's horrible, it's wicked. I want to tell you something. It is a, de a demonic manifestation going on right now at, 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 with the, the Justice Kavanaugh trying to be placed in there and everything going on. I just want you all to know that's demonic. That's absolutely 100% demonic. Hatred. It's not love. And I, I, I'm just telling you, it's manifesting in greater ways and greater ways and greater ways and greater ways. And we're seeing it more and more and more and more. People don't care about somebody else. They just want to get what they want. They don't care if they have to run over 100 to get what they want as long as they get what they want. And that is not love. Amen. The kingdom of God operates under love. It's going to flow out of you when you have compassion for something. When you care about something. When there's compassion on the inside of you compelling you, folks, you can get excited because I'm going to tell you something. Love is going to flow out of you. The kingdom is going to flow out of you because you're operating in love and you will see the manifestation of the power of God. But when flowing in you is anger, hatred. you got to get rid of it. Bitterness. When you're being pressured by the things that have hurt you and the things that are coming against you. Listen, you need to get healed over it so the devil has no place in you anymore so that you can flow in love because if you don't, he always has something over here to trip you up on. Because the kingdom of God is going to operate in you when you start walking in love. Now, listen. Right here, everybody usually turns me off. Because I'll be honest with you, I do not want to love my enemies. I wish that it was beat your enemies 
and love your friends. Okay? I, I, I'm honest. Listen, I'm just being honest with you. I love gun smoke. And I wish it was like that. Just step out on the street. If you're quicker, you win. <laughs> Obviously, if I lived in the Old West, I would be spending all of my money on shells practicing because I'd want to be as fast as I possibly could. <laughs> because if that's the way it's settled, I just want to be the best. Right? I know I'm going to be an honest man. I'm going to do whatever, but you want some of me here. Okay? Okay? And the truth of the matter is, I do spend a lot, even practicing today, and it's not even that times. But. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, if that's the way, you know, I, I would like it. But I know, factually, from the truth, that the kingdom of God flows out of love. And when the kingdom of God flows and God establishes his kingdom, it's going to be better than what I could with my quick draw. Are y'all with me? Because the kingdom of God is within you. It has the power to go out and affect all kinds of things. Everything we're doing in Guatemala is because inside of me, God spoke to me, and he showed me that even myself, that, that, that I, I have this love for orphans. I have this love. I don't even... Oh, it's, just, it, I, it's like I, I, I just... There's something about the underdog. There's something on the inside of me of the, somebody that pushes a kid down and, and, and they say they can't ever make it and they're nothing and it just stirs inside of me that I want to see them succeed. And so love, the kingdom of God, can be established because love flows. Hello? I'm trying to work on myself to find love for everything, and I don't. I'll be honest with you, I don't. I don't have any, you know, there's places in my life that I don't have love for. Have any desire for. It's like whatever, you, yeah, whatever happens to you, happens to you. I ain't, well, whatever. Somebody else can pray for you. <laughs> I got enough on my plate. You're on your own, bud. But when God touches me and it's coming out of me and, he, and I know God wants me to walk in that, it's like something changes on the inside of me. I, I have this love for this. It's, 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 un, it's supernatural. It's real. You know, like I heard of a minister one time, he has had this compassionate heart for, for athletes, for not, not on a local level, but professional athletes to minister to them. And I'm like, really? I've never crossed my mind once in prayer in my life. Did I think about them? Right? But that was a cart compassion they had for him, and they wanted to go minister to him. I'll go, glory to God. He'll have success in that if he's doing that in compassion and love. It's just not something I want to go to. I'll go to the orphan. I'll go to the, the widow. I'll go to, you know, to, the, to, the, to the downtrodden, because that's who's on my heart. And there's nothing wrong with that. That guy's not wrong. I'm not wrong. But the kingdom's only going to advance in love. Hello? Okay, now here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. A love chapter. Let me show you something. We're about to finish this and we're going to start practicing and getting the kingdom. We're going to get some of the cobwebs dusted off of your kingdom this morning. The third thing is, is that the kingdom, it's a kingdom of empowerment and equipping. God does not call you to do anything he's not going to equip you for. God does not call you to do something that he does not empower you for. God's not going to ask you to live in this world, own this world, and know that you're going to get consumed and eaten by the devil. He has empowered you and equipped you to walk in this world, and you can walk in this world in love and advance his kingdom. Remember, he said he's praying for labors. He's trying to find more people to go out and work. All right? 1 Corinthians 13, 1, the love chapter. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and of all knowledge and through all and 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 though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. And though I have bestowed all my goods to feed the poor and though I've given my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, 
is not provoked, thinks no evil. Do, whew. I mean, it took my breath away when I just read that. Thanks, no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Now listen to me. He's saying to you, I have equipped you in your toolbox for life to advance the kingdom of God in your life on this earth. And I have equipped you with all the tools that you will never fail. You will come up short in no tool. He said it another way. The Apostle Paul said, there's no temptation that's going to come upon you that's going to overtake you. Listen, he said, I have equipped you with all tools. You already have all tools in your kingdom toolbox inside of you that you will never fail. I don't know about y'all, but that's amazing. Are you with me? Does that mean you won't have any heartaches, any pains, any problems? No. It just means that you still have a tool inside to get over that. You still have a tool on the inside of you to overcome. Are you all with me? <laughs> My man... never fails right it never fails you are equipped everybody say i'm equipped you're equipped with every tool you need you got every tool in you to never fail you just got to know how to work it you just got to know how to operate in it you just got to know how to get the love flowing out of you to see what's going to come because you've already been equipped because if it says love never fails and it's a kingdom of love and God is love and he is inside of you, then you could never fail. So your marriage that may be hurting, how's it going? It can succeed and be victorious. Be the greatest marriage ever. Businesses that you're struggling, they can be the greatest businesses ever. You just got to figure out how, they, how to get to make love flow. Love's the key to it all. So, Lord, come up here. I want you to play something. So put your Bibles up. I want to finish with this. How are you going to start? See, because I told you this morning, I've, I've given you all the instruction you need to, to have a revelation of this. Whether you believe it or not, it's up to you. I've given you the instruction. I have fathered you this morning. I've told you how to do it. Now I'm going to kick you out of the nest and tell you to go how, what you need to go do. I'm literally going to give you the ability to put the words in your mouth to help you. How many of y'all have ever seen a mother feeding a child and they always go <laughs> so what I'm doing for you today I'm sitting up here saying come on do it and this is how you're going to start this is how you're going to start getting the kingdom operating in your life okay first thing you're going to do is you're going to start to tell your family that you love them you say, oh, well, I'll do that, Pastor. No, yeah, but is it? Men, this is what I want to tell you. I'll tell y'all, I, I, I'm not going to address the women. I'm going to address the men. Listen to me. You tell your wife you love her in such a way that in a minute you can't look her in the eyes anymore because you get embarrassed. That means you really did it. You say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Then you've never been there before. When you look your wife square in the eyes and you start to tell her how much they mean to you and how much you love them and all of what they do. And then before long, you're just saying it. And then before long, you just, you just, you're overwhelmed by emotion and you can't look them in the eye. You reach the point of love. Look at them and say, hey, I love you. 
I didn't cut it. You tell your children you love them. And you tell them and you look them in the eye and you say, I am always going to be there for you. I am going to love you all the days of my life and I will always be there for you through good times and bad times. I will be there for you. That's what you say to them. Both my son and my daughter can tell you from the, their youngest age, I told them, I said, I love you. I'll always be there for you. And you can do anything. You can do anything. You need to tell them that. You don't need to just tell them that once. You need to tell them that all the time. I've always said I would rather have my kids be too high-minded because I could always just slap them down <laughs> than to have them just be dragging along, not feeling like they had any self-worth. All right? Then you become, then number three is you tell Jesus, you tell Jesus that you'll always serve him and you mean it. Come hell or high water, I'm going to serve you, Lord. See, somebody said, well, you can't talk like that. Yeah, you talk like that. We're country. Jesus loves us. You tell him. I said, well, you know, you start talking like this, Robert, it makes me all feel, oh, whoosh, you on the inside. I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, you better change. Because if you want to see the kingdom of God operating in your life, you've got to operate in love. And this is the only way you can get it going. Hallelujah. This is what I'm trying to tell you. You've got to get it going. He said, well, my daddy, you know, he never showed me how to do it. Well, I don't care what your daddy did. Listen to me. I love my father. My father is a great man. He blessed me. He showed me how to, he showed me right from wrong. He showed me not to steal. He told me how to, told me I saw him, you know, make deals on handshakes. He's told me how to be a man of honesty and integrity. My father never one day in life told me he loved me. And I want you to know, I'm not that person. Because I know that that's not right. And I know that's the generation he was raised in, but I'll tell you what, that ain't the generation I'm raised in. I'm raised in a kingdom of God generation. And I tell my kids I love them. My son says to me, Dad, I love you. And I, 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 man, I just, I mean, you want to get in some macho thing, whatever, I'm just telling you, you're an idiot. Because I'm going to tell you something. You've got to walk like this. You, it's not about, I'm not looking for emotion. I'm walking in love. I'm, I'm, I'm announcing what I believe in. It's my passion. And I tell Jesus, Lord, I love you. And I mean it from my heart. you got to start, then the kingdom of God. The third thing, or wherever I'm on. Declare, your li declare over your life that you are a kingdom person. You're a kingdom of God person. That's why you operate like this. You got to study and say, Jesus, I love you, and I'm a kingdom man. I'm a kingdom woman. I'm, I'm operating in the kingdom of principles. And the last thing is, is you need to rejoice that the kingdom of God is on the inside of you. And when you do that, don't get mad. Say, Lord, this just ain't right. Man, I tell you, I don't want to love my enemies. Why do you get them making no kingdom like this? Just get over it. Give it up. Start rejoicing that the kingdom of God's on the inside of you and declare you're going to be a kingdom operator. You're going to operate in love no matter what. Folks, listen to me. Operating in the kingdom of God and operating in love does not mean does not mean that you have to be a doormat for every person that comes along. The Bible says if I forgive my enemies, God heaps burning coals upon their head. Ooh, I like it. 
I rejoice in that. My prayer goes something like this. Lord, I'm going to choose to forgive them. I'm going to choose to not hate them. I'm going to choose to not do it because I'm trusting in you. You're going to be a man of your word, like you said, faithful to your promises. And you're going to heap burning fiery coals upon his head. Burn him, Lord. He said, well, that doesn't sound like love much. Hey, it's out of my hands. I'm doing my job. Smoke him, Lord. Because this is the point. The other day, in a, in a bad situation, I began to dwell on it and I thought, and I said, you know, Lord, I, I really kind of believe it'd be better for that person just to be taken off of planet Earth. And that quick, the Holy Spirit said to me, well, what if they go to hell? And so I thought about it for a minute, and I thought, well, hmm, might be just what they deserve. And Jesus came to me. Just, I died for that person. And I had to stop and say, you know, Lord, I got to refocus my attention here because I love you so much that you paid a great price for that person. So therefore, I can forgive them and pray that they go to heaven because you paid a horrible price for them. And there's no sense you losing out. Change my attitude. What was it? Love. Seeing the love that Jesus had for me changed me. So then it changed me for that person. Now you may be sitting out listening or out there watching today and you think, Pastor, I can't believe you're that horrible of a person. I want you to know I'm just real. And there's no sense faking that you haven't had the same thoughts. There's no sense letting the spirit of religion come on you and say, oh, well, I've never been there. Because now you're just giving in to the spirit of lying, deception, everything else. This is real. This is humanity. I'm trying to tell you how to walk in the kingdom of God principles today. Amen. Literally, this will change your life. If you'll do it. So I want everybody to do this. I want you to stand up. If you're out there listening or watching the broadcast today, I just want you to know Jesus loves you. He paid a great price for you. And I want you to know that wherever you are, you can call out to Jesus and he'll come and he'll touch your life. He'll save you from the wrath to come. He'll save you from eternal separation from him. If you'll just say, Jesus, come into my life. If you'll just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. If you're in here, we'll have people up here to pray at the end of the service. And you can they come up here and pray with one and get them to pray with you. But what I want to major on is this. These last points. I just want you to be willing today to allow the Spirit of God to work through you. I want you to be bold enough today to make a commitment right now in front of God and say, Lord, I want to be a man of love. I want to be a woman of love. I want to operate in the kingdom of God principles. Man, I'm telling you, if you haven't told your wife you love her till you're embarrassed, you haven't got there yet. Some of y'all are looking at me pretty wild. You can't go on that old day. Well, I told you I loved you once when we got married. That's how you start. You got to start there. It'll change something if you do it by faith. You may not be the greatest romantic. You may not know what all to say. And I don't really want to give you the words because it needs to come from your heart. 
But I want you all to know that, you know, that my wife, I tell her how much I love her. Because she means everything to me. I know I wouldn't be here. I mean here. If it wasn't for her. You need to tell your kids. Some of you may be estranged from your kids. You need to call them up today and tell them you love them. And if that's where you start out and that's all you can get out is I love you, then so be it. So take that person's hand beside you. And I want to pray over you, but I also want you to do something for me. I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't want to, that's fine. But if you do, I believe it'll be the first day of the kingdom starting to operate. Because I think you need to tell Jesus right now how much you love him. So let me help you here. So Jesus, today I stand here with my heart wide open. And I want you to know I love you. I thank you for the price you paid for me. That you didn't come and leave me. But you saved me. You got me out of the hell I was in. And you took me to heaven with you. Thank you, Jesus. I determined today that I want to be a man or woman of the kingdom of God. I want to walk in love. I want to declare love. I want to advance the kingdom of love in my life. So I stand here and I say, I love you. I love you so much, Jesus. So let me bless you now, Lord. You heard their hearts. You see their hearts. You see each and every person here. You see all, see all of those out in the, in the listening audience, Lord. And Lord, I pray over them right now that the kingdom of God will come alive in their lives because we become people who will walk in love. And that right now today, lives are changed. That their eyes are open and they can see the wonders of the kingdom of God on the inside of them. So, Lord, I thank you for it. Lord, I praise you for it. Bless them now, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. Go out and love somebody today. Can we have some prayer people come up? If there's anybody here that needs prayer, we're here for you up front.